Right, Teleode Champs, hope you're all doing well. Now, let's talk about pre-built PCs. This is going to be the ultimate buyer's guide. I'm going to tell you everything you need to look for in a pre-built. I'm going to tell you what they all have in common, and they do have quite a lot in common. Now, I've reviewed many pre-built PCs, so you've come to the right place to find out about pre-built PCs. Because let's face it here, the only way you're going to get a gaming PC, like desktop sort of PC, is getting a pre-built. Building your own is an option if you can get the parts and then it's pretty cost prohibitive or not really economically viable at the moment. I have actually three pre-built here. One of them I bought myself, I'll tell you which one in a sec. And it's actually worked out pretty fortuitous that these three pre-built PCs exhibit the sort of diversity of what I'm going to be talking about in this video for what to look for. So I do have on the left the XPS tower. Yes, there is an XPS desktop. Yes, the one in the middle is the Legion 5i and the one on the right is the Alienware Aurora R. 11 or doesn't matter r12 they're all the same sort of thing one of the other reasons you want to buy pre-build is the warranty and customer support like i'm actually building a new ryzen system now stay tuned subscribe for that it's going to be like the fastest gaming pc you can get but i've already got a problem one it's crashing and also it looks like my all-in-one cooler is failing now i've checked the store they don't have another one in stock i can't exchange it they've got to you know take it back i've got to waste all my time pulling that apart and what you get with pre built is warranty ring them up hey i've got a problem yep they come and fix it that's how it works with dell at least the nova i think is the same depending on your region whatever no headaches with pre built right also other things to consider is maybe get a ps5 or xbox that's going to be the cheapest probably way to get into gaming also a laptop as well they're a bit more expensive but laptops are really good for gaming i've reviewed many of them as i have reviewed many of these all-in-ones as well so let's start with what all pre-builds have in common as i said i've reviewed so many what they all have in common is they are good for stock speeds okay don't think you're going to be overclocking these i don't care what they say on their product page they're not good for overclocking they are good for running at stock speeds there's a lot of people that'll say don't buy this it's hot garbage it's no good they are all perfectly fine for stock speeds just remember that now you're not going to get that much more out of overclocking so I don't think it's anything to worry about. But just know now, unless you're going to do a little modifications like Dream Gamer has done, like I'll leave a link to his channel with the Aurora R11. He's actually modified it, put an extra fan in there. He overclocks it, runs fine, it runs quiet. You can do that sort of thing. But when you buy pre-built, just think it's going to be running at stock speeds. You're going to have no problems. It's going to be good like that. If you try and do too much, it's going to get loud. It's going to get hot. But stock, it's fine. Also with pre-builds, they all have bare bones motherboards, okay? So they're just going to have maybe one M.2 slot, maybe another one if you're lucky. A couple of SATA ports, and that's about it. A couple of extra slots that are really hard to get to. They're usually very compact as well. Like they're really tight inside. That's where the Lenovo in the middle is actually really good. If you're someone that wants to tinker or something like that and actually put your own graphics cards in or you're used to building your own PCs, that Lenovo is really good in the middle there because you can fit standard power supply in there you can put pretty much any graphics card in there where the other two units you're going to have to get you know a small graphics card to fit in there and pretty much only get the graphics cards from the manufacturer because other graphics cards aren't going to fit so with these three pre-built here you look at the xps on the left it doesn't even have a fan on the cpu it's perfectly fine running at those stock speeds as i said it's very quiet even under gaming loads you'll hear the power supply and the you know the gpu a little bit but it's fine don't think of even overclocking it it's a nice compact unit don't particularly like this sort of dark one i do like the white one they do have a white one looks good set and forget it is awesome with the middle pc the lenovo as i said if you're someone that's used to building your pc this is good i don't think it's the most aesthetically pleasing one which to me is the alienware on the right but it's easy to work on it's easy to get in there it does have an air cooler it's virtually silent this thing that's one thing that's good about this legion 5i but this is the sort of pc you use if you're used to building your own or you want to get inside and tinker with it and maybe you want to modify stuff maybe put you know water cooler in it etc but as it comes out of the factory it's only good for stock as well you can overclock it but yeah things get louder and hotter right and then if we look at the alienware on the right here i think this is aesthetically the most pleasing this is the one i bought because it had the components i wanted and that's one thing too with that xps i can't get a 3080 right so that's out of the question i have to get the legion or this alienware it has to have the graphics card i want so that's one reason you want to pick one over the other now this alienware you can overclock it but it gets hot and it gets loud if you overclock it stock it's fine it's pretty quiet you can't hear it but 
you know, it's not overly loud. And if you go to Dream PC's channel, he shows you how to add an extra fan in there. You can overclock it to 5 gigahertz and it isn't even that loud. But for me, I bought this because it was the right deal at the right price. It's going to cost me a couple of hundred more than what an RTX 2080 would cost if I was to get one, if I could get one. And it's aesthetically pleasing. It's going to sit in my lounge room. I'm going to play my flight simulator. It's quiet when it runs stock. And because it's in my lounge room, I want it to look good. The Legion... It just wouldn't look good in my lounge room the way it's set up. It just The Alienware just looks better. Also, you might want to have a look at the components inside as well when you're looking at pre-builds because this Alienware has a 1000 watt power supply, Wolf, and it also has like HyperX, you know, gaming memory, premium stuff. So when it comes to buying a pre-built, Given that they're all similar, they all run at stock speeds, if you're just going to be using it for set and forget, these are the things you have to consider. There's no point comparing which one's faster. At stock speeds, they're all the same, right? So first and foremost, you have to look at the PC that has the components you want, meaning the XPS only goes up to an RTX 3070. There's a G5, I've reviewed that as well. Only goes up to RTX 3070. That's because of the power supply and how small and compact it is. That's out of the question for me. So I want an RTX 3080. So you have to go to one of the pre-builds that have that. Second for me, it has to work for me, right? It has to look good. It has to go in my setup or whatever. Maybe that's not important to you. But for me, when I was choosing the Alienware, it looks good. So I'm going to put it in my lounge room. Yes, that's what I had to consider. Number three, I think the most important thing now is the deal. What sort of deal are you getting on these pre-builds? Given that these all will run at the same sort of speeds out of the box, you're not picking them for performance you got to pick them on the deal and the components you want so the Alienware had the best deal for me it had the looks so I went with that and then there's another thing to consider if you're used to building your own systems are they easy to work with do they use standard parts non-standard parts and what extras they have on the motherboard but as I said most of them are bare bones they don't really have much on the motherboards but as you can see that Lenovo in the middle uses pretty much all standard parts so it's easy to work with it's big there's lots of room in there so if you're a tinkerer you like building your own pc i think you'll like the lenovo better or the legion but if you're not going to do all that stuff just get the one you can get on the deal and with the components you want i guess that's how it is i hope i helped you out here stay tuned i'll review each one of these separately but yeah hopefully you get a pre-built on a deal don't be scared just know what you're in for they're not great for overclocking unless you maybe do a bit of a modification there or you know you don't mind them being loud i mean you can overclock like say for example the only way it's going to get loud all right unless you do those mods like i said so anyway i'll catch you next one guys hope this helped you out tally ho